Can you tell us about your film Upside Down that's playing at the uh, London Film Festival? Well, in short, it's uh, a rock and roll film. It's a documentary. It details sort of heady times in British culture. Uh, that period of time that creation was functioning covers everything from punk rock through acid house into Britpop with, I would argue, some of the most colourful characters in British sort of musical history. So it features people like Noel Gallagher and the Oasis Gang, uh, Primal Scream, Super Fairy Animals, Teenage Fan Club. It's very much, it's, very, it's an independent film about an independent company, because Creation obviously fought the law and, and actually won. They outsold some of the majors, they took it to them. But um, it's indie without wearing a cardigan. It's not apologetic, and there is this indefinable thing in, in music, I think, which is, I think, all of us would subscribe to when you go along to see some band or some performing artist. To me, it's all about swagger. And I don't mean that that's false. I mean, actual, genuine, I was born to do this, Liam Gallagher swagger. And I'd hope that the film has that in filmic terms as well, because it's... Um, by my own admission, it's quite entertaining, simply because of the people who are in it. Um, Alan McGee was sort of known for being uh, something, leaving something of a trail of destruction in his wake in his heyday. Um, what was he like to work with? Well, Alan is has been a great supporter. I hasten to add, he's not uh, he's not involved editorially or financially, but yeah, he has held my hand over the last three years on this weird little odyssey. Uh, he is, by his own admission, a nut job. Every day is different, every hour is different, but he's inspiring. He's, he's got a real lust for life and an incredible passion for music without overanalyzing it. It's just either yes or no. There is no, there is no interim, you know, there is, the, the, there is no alphabet, it's A and Z. There are no colors, it's black and white, you know. So he's, he's, he's fantastic like that uh, and great guy to work with. Wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of him. Oh shit, I have rather a lot, but no, he's great. Um, why do you think it was a, a good time now in 2010 to, 2010 to uh, tell the story of Creation Records? <laughs> time to tell. <laughs> well, I embarked on the most lucrative project that, that my company, the company I own, uh, has invested in ever, just as we were nosediving into the deepest recession in bloody history. But, uh, no, it is the right time for creation because a lot of these bands are still there or thereabouts. They're still important to a variety of generations. You know, the Oasis gigs last year when they were playing the stadia around the country, I would argue there were probably as many people there who were 20 as, as there were 40 and whatever else. That would be one key driving force. The other is that creation started 25 years ago, so it's a neat peg to hang it all on. Uh, that you know this maverick label came and went uh, but it, it kind of put a full stop on the last century so if you look at 50 years of rock and roll to me creation is the sort of the final little bit you know what started with Elvis Presley and Sun Records in the 1950s ended with Oasis and Primal Scream at the end of the 90s and there's a there's a wonderful quote in the in the film from Griff from the Super Furries uh, who does make the point that Nostradamus said just at the turn of the millennium that the world would end, that creation would be over, was the quote. And indeed, creation ended in November 1999. What Nostradamus didn't know was that it was a space rock label. Uh, just last question, how do you think that uh, your film uh, compares to other recent sort of uh, Britpop documentaries such as the Blur film and Live Forever? I really enjoyed uh, both of those films, Hand on My Heart, I really enjoyed them. My film is different because it's not narrated, it's narrated by the, the, you know, the key characters, they tell their own story. I think the wider story of creation itself is more of an attitude of mind rather than a sort of cultural phenomenon. You know, so uh, Live Forever was a brilliant film, right up close and personal with some, and the same with No Distance Left to Run as well, but they are singular and there for the fans of those bands. I'm hoping with the creation film that it is, as I say, a document of that period of time in music, that it, it really does take everything from origins in punk rock going right through, whether you want to call it shoegazing through Acid House, into Britpop, and then out before the end of the century. So it's, it's a broad church, and it's, uh, I think, a very significant period of time in British culture.